I want to talk about how Thailand has simplified my life and changed my life in the almost two years that I've been here. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that before moving to Thailand, I had never lived outside the U.S., never had even lived outside of the state that I grew up in, had no idea about Thailand. I was not one of those guys who actually did a lot of research before coming here. I just took a chance and said, you know, if it works out, great. If it doesn't, great. But I must say that over the time that I have been here, my life has truly been simplified. My mind has expanded and opened up. And I'm so, so grateful for the opportunity to even be over here in this country of Thailand. And so I want to talk about just a few ways that Thailand has changed my life and simplified my life. And I'll start off by talking about the very current state of my home country, the U.S., right? And this video isn't to, to bash the U.S. or to uplift Thailand. I think it's just about getting real and, and just being honest and upfront. I was talking with someone recently and they asked me, why are so many Americans choosing to come live in Thailand? And honestly, the first answer that came to my mind is that I think a lot of people are fed up. They're fed up with, you know, our government. They're fed up with the amount of taxes that they pay. They're fed up with the cost of living. They're, they're fed up with corporations running the country. And I can, I can understand that. I can truly agree with that because the American dream, in my opinion, being in the generation I'm in, is honestly, it seems like it's dead. It's not really a thing anymore, right? If you look back at historical charts and seeing how much the cost of everything has gone up over the past 50 years, it is truly outrageous. The cost of homes are through the roof. Even the cost of rent is through the roof in most states and cities that are worth living in. Uh, yeah, you can find cheaper rent in the country, but usually they're in places where it's low uh, job opportunities, low pay, and not really desirable places to just, you know, to live and to raise a family or whatever your desires are. And now that you have content creators and, and people coming online and sharing what life is like outside the U.S., people's minds are being opened up. I feel like being an American growing up, I feel like growing up in America, we're a bit brainwashed as to what it's like to live in other parts of the world, right? When we think of America, we think land of the free and all rights and all these different things. And I want to pose a question. Are we really that free in America as we say or come across? Do we think we're free because we can own guns? Because the way I see it is, is it truly freedom to be scared for your life no matter where you go, knowing that, you know, school shootings are happening, grocery store shootings are happening, people are getting killed in churches, pretty much anywhere, car break-ins and theft is through the roof. Is that truly freedom? And so now, you know, people are, their eyes are opened up. They're realizing, you know what? America might not be the greatest thing on earth. America might not be what we thought it was, right? And that's why I say a lot of people are, are brainwashed to thinking that, you know, once you leave America, things go downhill or you're going to get less. And I can tell you guys, as someone who's now lived overseas for a couple of years, that that is completely untrue. Obviously, there are upsides and downsides to anywhere you live in the world. But I can tell you guys for sure that there is a lot of areas that America is truly falling behind and it's truly disappointing, you know. And, and I believe that our generation could potentially see a revolution and could see change because I think people are at their breaking point, right? You have a lot of people. Let's just take one topic, for example. Let's talk about taxes, right? America, a country nearly founded on a tax revolt, now people are paying up to like 50% of taxes. And you probably say like, who's paying 50% of taxes? Well, not on paper, right? Let's say on average, people are paying 25 to 35% in taxes, like income taxes and whatnot, federal, state. Then let's get into everything else we're taxed on. Your tax on sales tax, your tax on your home, whether you own it or not. Your tax on your vehicle, your tax for literally Everything. You're taxed when you make money. you tax taxed when you sell things. You're literally taxed on every single thing. So if you take in those other taxes plus inflation, because inflation is basically a hidden tax, we are paying through the roof. Almost 50% of our income goes to taxes. I also looked it up. America is, I think, one of the only countries, developed countries in the world, that doesn't have a universal health care system. A developed country. One of the only developed countries that does not have a universal healthcare system. So most of our healthcare is ran through private, costing us an arm and a leg 
for simple health care. And you're penalized if you don't have insurance. You can face fines. How does any of this make sense? Mind you, the same country that you're paying all these tax dollars to and they're sending billions and billions of dollars overseas and towards things that do not, they are not of the general American interest. We vote people into office, these politicians that only go into office to serve themselves. Politicians go in making maybe $100,000 a year on paper, but somehow manage to become multi, multi millionaires while once again the average American is being starved out. We have corporations lobbying and they have pretty much more rights and more pull than we do as citizens, right? And most of the things that are being put into place are for their benefit. And so, yes, when you ask most Americans why do they want to leave now, they are simply fed up with everything. America is almost becoming the laughing stock of Western society, of just society in general, right? People are looking like America, this country once thought was so great, is not what it seems. And so America does a lot of good job, good job of showing the bad in other places, but not really showing its own problems. So with that being said, how has moving to Thailand simplified my life? Well, one, obviously the most obvious is being able to live on less and still have a good life is such a sense of freedom, right? And I want to give you guys some examples because let's take one thing as far as expenses go. Let's talk about a car. I do not, I do not have to own a car here in Thailand. Using Grab and Bolt and the, and the SkyTrain is very affordable here. So when you own a car in the States, right, either whether it's paid for or not paid for, let's just say your car is not paid for. You have a car payment. Let's say you're paying four four to $500 a month for your car, right, just for a car payment. Maybe another $200 a month for insurance. Okay, what about gas, maintenance, taxes and registration, finding parking when you go out. All these things add on and add on and add on and add on. And I was recently talking with someone as well about just car insurance in general. Like, okay, you have to own car insurance. You have to have it or else you can't register your vehicle. You'll face fines and whatnot. But how much money have you spent in your lifetime towards insurance versus how many accidents you've gotten into or how much has it benefited you? If you've never been to an accident, then simply you just throw money down the drain for car insurance. These are just hidden expenses that, you know, that take away from your finances and your ability to spend on other things that matter more to you. Let's talk about food. Here, I can go get about a pound of chicken wings for, say, I'm just going to take a rough estimate, about $3. How much do chicken wings cost you now in the States? They're almost probably over a dollar per little wing. There's so many other things I can get into. Let's talk about my apartment living, right? So right now, I'm in my condo in Bangkok, which I pay $404 a month for. And it's not the most huge space, right? But it's comfortable to me. And so when I'm talking about how my life has been simplified, in the U.S., I would feel like I was chasing the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. Like, you know, before moving here, you know, own luxury cars and was chasing, you know, a nicer apartment. My apartment before coming to Thailand was a lot bigger than this space. It's like 1,200, 1,300 square feet, two bedroom, spacious room, right? But I didn't need all that space. So when I talk about Thailand has simplified my life as well, it's also made me realize that I don't need as much as I thought to also to be happy. I'm not... Rarely am I ever concerned how I'm dressed out here. Typically, it's so hot, you'll just catch me out in something like this and some shorts and some slides. Not, I don't feel the pressure to try to impress anyone. You know, I can go out and order a street meal for 50 baht. And it's not just those things as well. It's not just about the money here. Obviously, that's a very important factor. But also, it has exposed me to different culture and people. And I must say, from my experience, that Thai people have been amazing. Thai people have been friendly. Obviously, has everyone been the nicest? No, but that would be irresponsible for me to expect kindness and, and from every single person, right? Because you never know what people are going through behind the scenes. Some, somebody could be having a bad day or obviously there's just bad apples no matter where you go. But I must say that, you know, the average Thai person I've interacted with have been, has been very friendly. There's not time here over this past two years where I've been out and haven't felt safe. And so these are little things well, actually, not really little things, but these are big things that matter, right? So I'll take the safety I feel here versus the, the feeling in America where I feel like I need to own a gun and carry it everywhere I go. Mind you, like I said, crime happens here. But for the average foreigner who's minding their own business and not getting into trouble and not being around the wrong crowd, I'm going to say you're pretty much overall, you're safe here. It's not really a thing you have to worry about. 
So these are some of the things that I'm comparing when it comes to living in America versus living here in, in Asia, Southeast Asia, is that it's such a big difference, and, you know, a big gap. And so I'm able to appreciate life more, appreciate money more, right? It, t- living here in Thailand, Southeast Asia, has, Southeast Asia has given me a new appreciation for money. Or as I used to just look at $100 and be like, oh, this ain't nothing. $100 is a new $20 bill. But now I can think to myself, okay, over here, $100 could be half of rent. And I'm saying half because I have another condo in Patsy that's only $245 a month. So if you take $100, it's a little bit less than half of the rent. So now money matters more because thinking about like, okay, you know what? The smaller amounts of money can actually go further. So it's almost like being in a time machine where now my money can get me more. I can get more bang for my buck. And obviously... Being here on the side of the world, this is where a lot of things are produced and created in America, imports, you know, a lot of products from Thailand and not Thailand, from, from China and all over here in Southeast Asia. And they mark the price way up. Living here, I get to basically get it at the best rate. So there's many benefits I've personally experienced. But I would say the biggest thing, and this video, once again, is not about telling everyone, hey, you know, pack it up and move to Thailand. I would say the point I'm trying to get across in this video is to not be afraid to escape the box or get outside of your comfort zone, right? And so for some of you watching this, maybe you'll find your place in a different country. You'll find the peace of mind you're looking for in Belize, or maybe you'll find it in South Africa, or maybe you'll find it in Spain. I don't know. The whole point of this, though, is to inspire you to, you know, don't be afraid to be mobile, especially for the younger people um, who don't have kids, you're not married, or even if you are married. Or maybe you're older, but don't be afraid. I've met people of all age ranges and it always, you know, excites me to see people just living their life and not being constrained to what, you know, uh, what, so- what society typically tells you you have to do or what life should be. And in so many people right now, like, you know, back home in America, the, you know, I feel like a lot of American culture just revolves around work, 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 work. It becomes like an endless rat race for most people that they cannot escape because it's just, it's never ending right? Cost of living goes up, but wages don't go up. And so these are just some of the issues that need to be addressed in America. But I chose for now that uh, if I can't fix those problems, because a lot of people like to talk about the issues but not do anything about them, then the other option is to relocate. And so I believe, you know, the new wave in 2024 and beyond is being mobile and uh, having the ability to relocate, right? And so with being mobile and relocating, another way that living over here has simplified my life, I came over here with basically two bags. I sold everything I had back home. And I realized that I actually love the idea or love the lifestyle of having less and not have so many things, right? Because we get in this habit of chasing things and things and things and things and things that we really, most of the time, we don't even need. Like for the average person watching this right now, go look in your closet. How many pieces of clothes and shoes and, and jewelry or whatnot do you have that you don't use? How many parts of where you currently live right now that you really spend any time at, right? We have this idea of, of, of tremendous excess and waste. And I, I don't really want to support that type of mindset in living anymore, right? Coming here to Southeast Asia and seeing how far money can go, not just for my own sake, but seeing how even a small amount of money can really change someone's situation. For example, as expats, well, that's, you know, coming over here with our currency having a higher monetary value is that we got to remember not to forget about the people here, right? Because we can think about how good our lives are, but we also got to remember that, hey, we're able to come here and save money. We should also be trying to pass that benefit on to people who live here who are not doing as well, right? times I have to remind myself of that that hey you know what it's like you're here not just for your own good but like not being selfish and being willing to you know give and help out others and just for example like you know one day I was just walking and you know sometimes you'll be walking you'll see some homeless people and obviously like anywhere homeless people can feel like they go unseen right like it just no one's paying attention and one day I was like wait a minute like you know like I it kind of hit me. I'm like, you know what? Like, what is it? What does it really cost me to help somebody? So just go to ATM and just take out a thousand baht. Now, mind you, it's a thousand baht a lot of money. No, it's only thirty dollars. But when I gave it to the lady, like, just to see the smile on her face and her excitement was like, wow. Because a thousand baht 
for a local, that could feed someone for a week or even two weeks, depending on how many, uh, how much their meals cost and how much they're eating a day. Because you can eat as low as you know a meal for 40, 50 baht. So that's actually, it goes a lot further than you may think. So a little reminder too for all the experts who come here and have it to give, you know, don't forget to give and help out the local people here as well. Um, but the point of that was just, well, just reminding me of saying like, you know, for $2,000 or $3,000, you could house someone for a whole year here. That's impossible in America. So these are some of the things I've thought about and, you know, as I've been over here and my vision just has expanded and what I want for my life is definitely a little bit different than it was in the U.S. that I'm not about really building my life up to the max it can be or trying to make as much money for me as possible. I just feel like that's a dead end chase. So the things I want to do now, the vision is a lot bigger and centered around helping others, which I'm not going to share too much of that because um, I'm not going to share too much about what, I, what my next plans are publicly. But let's just say that, you know, my vision has definitely expanded. And so I just made this video to say that, you know, I really appreciate uh, Thailand. And I also just want to once again encourage you guys to live outside of your comfort zone and don't be afraid to explore around because you never know what's on the other side or, or even if it's for a short period of time. You know, I don't know how long my life will be here in Thailand or if I will, you know, choose to live somewhere else. But I must say I'm super, super grateful for even the time I've had so far um, to be here. And I hope over the next, you know, year or so that I just continue to, uh, you know, meet a more amazing people and to uh, dive more into the culture, learn more of the language. That's something I've definitely been working on is trying to uh, pick up more Thai. I'm not fluent yet, nor am I like conversational, but I can, I've definitely improved since when I first got here. But the goal, one of my goals I will share is that over the next year, I do want to get fluent because I feel like that can help me expand my content, my reach and the relationships I build because I feel like if you're going to come to a foreign country, then 100%, if you're going to be here long term, it's just, you know, it, to me, it's just respect just to learn the language and to uh, get a better understanding of the people um, whose home that we are visiting. With that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it you know, gives you some thoughts, something to think on. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.